uploaded this sort of clip art clip arty thing and I'm gonna isolate this spider I want to put this spider on the top of my skull's head okay is that redundant skull's head I don't know so I've isolated it separated it out and I took some of the darkness down using levels just so it's sort of gray and not super black and white and I'm starting with the one that I've given you. So the skull of the student, 01, this is what you're going to have. I'm going to hide my grid to get it out of my way. And the first thing I'm going to do is save it. Harley Sculpt Tutorial 01. Make sure you save it out. In case you ever have to go back to the original skull, you can. It's nice and clean. It's in quads generally. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that texture in to create a new material. So I already have, again, my hyper shade right here. But those of you that don't know where to find it, it's under Windows, Rendering Editor, Hyper Shade. And again, I've already given you a black material, a white material, and we have our default Lambert here as well. I'm going to create a new one just for this texture. It's a Lambert, so we don't have any specularity. I change my color by clicking on the little checker. Go to File, go to Image Name, and navigate to where I have my spider located and click Open. And we're just going to leave that there for now. I might also go in just to make sure to keep things clean and call it Spider. And you can see it shows up right here in my material. Now I need to decide where I want to project this to. So I'm going to use a planar projection to keep it simple. And I need to up res my skull first. So I'm going to go to the top. And notice that I'm not going to the top view because it's a little bit rotated. I'm going to go to use my perspective view. And I'm actually going to select from my perspective view and planar project from my perspective camera. So I have to hit F11 to get to my faces. And I'm going to use my lasso tool to select a big wide range of surface on the top of my skull. And understand when I did that, I selected everything through it as well. So all of this stuff got selected. I don't want to up res my whole skull. It'll be harder to work with. So I'm going to deselect all this stuff down here that's orange by holding down control. And drawing a circle around it to deselect all that. Now I have all this stuff isolated. And another trick that I'll teach you is how to create a, uh, a selection, a quick select set. Because you're going to want to select all these little itty bitty faces again before you project. And if you don't do a quick select set before that, you're going to be stuck trying to grab them all one by one by hand, which will take a little bit of time that we don't have. So now I'm just going to subdivide by going to Edit Mesh, Add Divisions, and making sure Division Levels 1s. We have a mode of quads, and I'm going to apply it. And you're going to see this thing res up. And believe it or not, that's still not enough. So I'm going to do it again. Yes, I could have put Division Levels 2 in there. I'm going to do it one at a time just to see the results and get familiar with those results. I'm going to hit Apply again and Close. You're going to see a lot of mesh in there. It's still not super high res it's enough to sculpt on though and now because i still have all of those faces selected i'm going to create a quick selection set and to do that sometimes i forget how to do it there set so create sets quick select set i'm going to call it skull top spider click ok Now you'll see that if I get out F8, when I did that, it created a bunch of mesh in there. Um, if I go to select, quick select sets, you'll see skull top spider on there. And I do that, just selected all those faces again very quickly. Now I'm going to position my camera again where I want to project from. And I'm going to go to UV. Planar map, options, project from camera, and I'm going to project. And then I have to go to my hyper shade and right click on spider and go assign material to selection. And you'll see 
If I hit six on my keyboard, my spider showed up right on top of my skull. Now I have something to go by when I sculpt. And the tricky part of this is when I use my sculpting tools, and really all I'm going to use is sculpt tool to lift, and I'm going to use smoothing quite a bit. You might reuse relax. Um, you can also use one that's a little handy is the wax tool, which will build the surface up. But first of all, I'm going to start with um, selecting my mesh and clicking the sculpt tool, and I'm going to double click on it to get my options. These are important. Notice, by the way, the texture went away. That's what I was saying when this can be a little bit of a pain. I was hoping when I was trying to do this that the texture would stay there and I could just sculpt right over that spider. You can't. And I don't know how to do it. So you have to sort of use it as a guide. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test my brush. Um, know that you can hold down B and make your brush larger or smaller intuitively. This will change the size. We have a size unit, it's a world, and a strength of 8.462. Invert will push, not invert will pull, and my direction is center normal. These are important. Okay, we have a bunch of different options here, center normal, average normal, vertex normal. Um, without having to get into a ton of explanation on those, those are basically tangents that are coming off of each face or vert perpendicularly. Okay, so if I pull, you also have the options of going forward or right, X, Y, and Z, or to the camera. I'm going to leave it at center normal, and I'm just going to do a test strip right there and rotate around and look at it. I don't think that's quite high enough. I'm going to bump my strength up maybe to 13 and take a look again. Notice when I go back and forth, it continues to pull, by the way, so you have to be a little bit careful with that. I think that's a pretty good setting right there. So I'm going to go back to my selection tool and my spider will come back on. And now I'm just going to zoom in and I'm going to eyeball, sort of get an idea of, hey, I got to draw the leg right here. I got to sculpt that. So I'm going to go back to my sculpt tool and go, okay, it started about right there, it went down and around right there. Remember, this doesn't have to be exact. You guys are the artists. You're creating this mesh. If I click on my select tool and bring it back and go uh, I, I missed well you can either do it again you could spend all day trying to get it perfect or you can go okay that's good enough let's go to the next leg and go sculpt I gotta bring one down in here and I'm bringing them to the same place that works go back to my sculpt tool I'm getting an idea I'm looking at this going okay I got a starter out right there another leg down here Missed a little bit, but whatever. I'm just trying to make a spider on the guy's head. Cool. That works. Back and forth until you get it all. I'm going to do all the legs first. Try to get it as symmetrically as sound as possible. Now I'm going to build up the abdomen. And I know, you know, even though I'm using a 2D texture, I know that spiders have these, especially black widows, have these big, giant, nasty abdomen that scare the heck out of me, full of poison or something, I'm not sure. And I know, again, that the head is up here. I'm going to probably refrain from even messing with the little antenna. You can try, but for now I'm going to leave it here. But now you, you got to notice, look what happened to my mesh here. Because it pulls at normals, normals will change. And sometimes you'll get the normals to pull towards one another and get some crossed up mesh. Okay, and there's a couple different tools that will help relieve that and smooth things out. One is the smooth tool. The other one is relax. So if I have my smooth tool, watch what happens. It sort of averages them out. If I have my relax tool... It'll relax the mesh as well. So using both of those together will really help you help you um, sculpt whatever you want to put on the skull. So now I'm going to spend a lot of time going back and forth with sculpting, pushing, pulling, smoothing until I get something that I think looks good enough on my model.
And eventually, see, he's got like a link. He's got like a spine. I don't want a spine on him. Sometimes it's better to go back to your um, sculpt tool. Maybe take the brush down a little bit. Pull up a little bit. Go back to smooth, and it'll average those out. So again, pushing and pulling. Maybe I want to push that down. I go here and I select invert, and it'll actually push that down a little bit. And then I can go back to smooth again. See if I could average that out to get a smoother surface. In the end, I think you'll have something pretty cool. Again, close, not perfect. Um, <laughs> once I'm done, <clears throat> excuse me, using the texture as my guide, I'm going to select my skull again, go back to my hyper shade, and, and apply the white to the whole thing, assign material, and that'll go away so you'll get a better idea of what we're looking at. As yesterday, uh, we noticed that these edges got hardened and we got all these spots. There's a way to fix that. Again, select your skull. Go to Mesh Display. Normals. These are normals. This is all normal stuff here down to vertex color. I'm going to set the normals to the face. When I do that, you'll see they all sort of harden. And then I'm going to go in and soften. Mesh Display. Soften Edge. And you should see a pretty smooth looking mesh. Word of warning, I see a lot of people still doing little itty bitty detail. I tried to put a flower on his chin. It didn't look so good. It's possible. Just know that you don't have a ton of mesh to work with. It's not like painting pixels. You have to understand the verts that are there that can be pulled and pushed. Even if you up res it twice like I did with the top, those little itty bitty details may not work. Okay, so just be heads up on that. Think big. Remember that these are only going to be printed at about seven or eight centimeters. So, you know, even when we paint them, what will people see? What will they not see? We might be wasting time doing little itty bitty curly cues. Okay. You can even be creative with this. You don't have to bring a texture in. I mean, I can go back to my sculpt tools and. Do a spiral of some sort over it. Oops, I have push. You can push if you want, but I don't suggest it. Invert. Do a little. I know there's a lot of spiral sort of stuff. And just go, okay, I like that. Cool. Let's try to do it on the other side. That's fine. Okay, be creative with it. Again, beware of the stuff around the eye socket. It can be very difficult to work with, even if you up res it up there. You are allowed to, if you want, alter the face a little bit. Okay, you can get rid of these holes. I'm not sure what these holes are exactly. I think they're like nerve holes for the face. Could be sinuses. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. But you can get rid of them. You can smooth them out. If they're in your way and you want to put something there, get the smooth tool. Smooth them out of there. Very quick. Up here. I mean, what happens if I take my smooth brush and start going over the whole eye socket might have a better surface to work with totally up to you